but you should also know how they're implemented internally and you don't know that and so you will obviously not be able to solve that problem so these questions you ask to yourself and when you ask the right questions to yourself you get the right answers Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Coding Ninjas. My name is Ankush and in this video we will be discussing five mistakes that I made while learning data structures and algorithms. Right. So without further ado, let's begin. Right. So the first mistake that I made was not giving enough time to each data structure algorithm. Now what do I mean by this? It is that when you are learning a data structure, let's say you are learning a hash map, right, or a priority queue or a heap, let's say, right. So you need to understand when it is used. What are the different operations that I can do on it? And what is the time complexity of each operation? Right. So let's take an example of heap, right? So when do we use heap? We use heap when we want to query the maximum or minimum element repeatedly, right? We want to insert some elements or we want to remove some elements. That's when we use heap, right? So initially when I was learning, I was just, you know, I don't know what I was doing, but I was skipping through a lot of things, right? Not giving enough time to each data structure as if I was in a some hurry or something. So don't do that, right? So uh, my thumb of rule is like for any given data structure, let's say, let's take heap only, right? So for any given data structure, practice at least 10 questions of that particular topic before moving to some next topic and ideally out of those 10 questions three can be easy five should be medium and at least two hard questions you should practice out of 10 you can scale this like ratio according to your need but i believe like the starting point of 10 questions per topic or per data structure is a really good place to start right so that was the first mistake that you should always give enough time to a data structure right so the second mistake is actually the complete opposite of the first mistake but people still make that right uh, i personally did not do it because i am lazy but uh, i saw a lot of my friends do it and it's no fault of their own but it's a mistake and that mistake is giving too much time on a topic or data structure algorithm right so basically what i mean by this right so like uh, when you should try a topic uh, let, let's take backtracking for an example right so backtracking inherently is a difficult topic to master right so what my friends would do is they would go to uh, some site and they put the tag for backtracking and then they try to solve all the problems on that platform now why this is wrong because when you are learning data structure algorithms you don't know what you don't know right so uh, the problem might be a combination of backtracking paired with some data structure or paired with some dynamic programming and you don't know that and so you will obviously not be able to solve that problem and because you are not able to solve that problem you would feel disheartened right when you feel disheartened like when you see no one is cheering for you it's that time when you give up right because you don't see progress right but that is not your fault because dynamic programming or some other data structure basically something like graphs would come along the way and but at that that point of time you don't know that uh, graph theory is being used in this problem or dynamic program is being used in this problem so my advice would be like as i said in the previous video that try to do 10 problems right and then move on right we want a perfect balance between breadth and depth of knowledge right so therefore let's on code studio when you are learning some topic uh, put that tag and do 10 questions but don't try to solve each and every problem right so for example on code studio you have 100 plus problems alone for binary tree right but you don't need to solve uh, that 100 problem you need to solve few problems so that your problem solving skills build right so the second mistake definitely to watch out is not giving too much time for a topic right because we want to uh, complete all of the basic data structure algorithms right so keep this in mind that you are not overspending your time on a particular topic so the third mistake that I made was relying too much on the library functions that I have. So I use C++, right? So there we have the HTL library and a lot of data structures are actually implemented in the library itself. So you, it's like uh, just declaring that data structure and you can, you're off to the races. You can use that data structure, right? So while competitive coding or while solving interview problems or code studio, it is really, really helpful. And I actually recommend you learning the library functions, but you should also know how they're implemented internally. And and the functions that they have like uh, for example you have queues right so in queues you can either push you can either pop or you can get the size or you can check if they're empty or not so these are all the stl functions other languages like java they also have their own libraries right so one 
it's good to know these but you should also know how they're internally implemented and you should know what are the time complexity of the various functions that they provide right and that's very important right so i encountered a lot of interviews where these were asked to me and like i knew from above but when they pressed upon it that why it is the way it is then i like sort of cracked and uh, that was the day that i made sure that i know all these time complexities and i know how they are actually implemented so you know what make sure that you know and you know in some cases also that the interview might ask you to write the pseudo code or even code for some data structure so something like a stack or queue they are very readily asked in an interview also hash map many interviews might ask on like how collision is handled in a hash map what are the various ways in which you can build your hash map so you know what you should actually know these so you know what just uh, it's good to learn the library functions but also know their inbuilt workings their time complexities of various functions and what are the different types right so let's say in c plus there are three types of hash maps so you should know the difference between those hash maps uh, as well right so yeah so that, that was the third mistake that don't rely too much on stl functions read out their internal theory read out how they're implemented and the time complexities that they provide to you so the fourth mistake that i made was doing random practice on random sites while learning right so what does that mean like what i used to do i was very fascinated by various online judges right so i used to go on any random site and start practicing random problems and the problem with that is that again you don't know what you don't know while learning right it's after you have seen the bigger picture you know that hey maybe i can think in this way or make maybe i can think in this way right but while learning it is really important to stay focused on what you are doing and practice practicing the stuff that you know and not going off to the stuff that you don't know because doing the stuff that you don't know will only bring demotivation and a sense of failure sort of right because you are not able to do that problem do random problems right and so that's why i would recommend like while you are learning don't solve random problems solve only those problems that you have an idea now this does not mean don't solve hard problems or only solve easy problems this means that practice in a structured way uh, right so you while you are practicing put the tag on of which you are practicing right so on code studio if you are practicing let's say arrays put that tag on and see what comes up don't just start randomly practicing those problems right so that's why the that tag feature really helps because that avoids us a lot of time wasted i would say right because when you are solving a problem that you can't solve because you don't have the prerequisite for it you are only wasting your own time and you are wasting no one else's time right so you should not do random practice in any case when you are learning right so this was the fourth mistake to avoid random practice while you are learning data structure and algorithms so the fifth mistake is actually a mistake that people make after learning data structure and algorithms but i should mention like it is a common mistake right and that mistake is not solving random problems right so now you would say to me like ankush you just said in the last section that we should not practice random problems and yes i said it and i still stand by it but i said don't practice random problems while you are learning data structure algorithms but once you are done with learning data structure algorithms like you know arrays hash map heap stack queue linked list and graphs right and you know various algorithms like linear search bandy search and you know a lot of algorithms that is when when you start practicing random problems because solving random problems without seeing the tag actually helps you build logic it actually actually helps you see on your own that when to use certain algorithm right or uh, it actually asks your brain to ask questions right will sorting this array actually help me is this actually a string problem or is this a breadth for search problem wrapped in a string problem right so these questions you ask to yourself and when you ask the right questions to yourself you get the right answers which can only be built when you don't know the topic of the question that you are practicing right because if you know that this question will use binary search or this question is of uh, you know dynamic programming you will think in only one, uh, only one direction and that will actually obstruct your mind to consider all possible ways because mind it in an interview you are expected to explore the question you are expected to ask questions that hey does this array have distinct integers does it have only integers between certain range and that will only come uh, when you solve random problems right so do practice random problems after you are finished learning data structure algorithms right so now you would ask like when do i know that i know enough to start solving random problems right so to answer that if you have completed our course our data structure algorithms course on the coding in the side then you can be sure that you know enough to start solving random problems or you can check out the guided path on the code studio where there is a data structure algorithm guided path right you can check that out and after you have completed you would obviously get a certificate and then you can also say that you know what 
and now i know enough to start pr practicing random problems so that is the uh, point when you can start practicing random problems because you know enough to be on your own right to understand what you don't know right so these were the five mistakes that i made while learning data structure algorithms i really hope you like this video if you liked it do like the video do subscribe to the channel do comment below what you liked about this video and i'll see you in the next one so till then goodbye